Hello, I'm Dave Monk and I'm going to show you a little bit about how to edit uh, a, a video and I'm actually taking um, a copy of the Dark Island that I did uh, earlier on uh, and I'm going to show you how to put these together in um, PowerDirector 10. So first of all I've loaded my various files and these consist of um, a distant shot of me playing, uh, a close-up shot of me playing, an uh, mp3 file of the actual music that I've created um, and a couple of backdrop videos. Uh, right at the back of everything I'm going to put uh, a video of flying through clouds. So I'm going to drop that onto line one which is the backmost track in the video. As you can see here um, it doesn't actually fit the, uh, the screen completely so I'm going to stretch it to fit the wide 16 by 9 uh, setup that I'm using today. Okay, there we are. Now, if I go back to the beginning of the clip, you'll, clip, you'll see it's uh, black and it slowly comes in <coughs> as it starts up. I don't want that, I want it to be there, so I'll stop it there and I'm going to split the end off. So I'll click on split and I can then delete just by pushing the delete key once I've selected that little bit I want to lose and now here we have the, the video looking exactly as I want it. Uh, the second part of, of the video was uh, a recording of a helicopter flying over the top of the Isle of Skye and I'm going to put that on the next line down. Um, Again, it doesn't fit the screen, but because this is a poorer quality, I don't particularly want it to fit the screen. I want it to sit up in the corner a bit, as if it's a, sort of a picture on the wall behind me. Now, in the actual video, I'll put a board around it, but I won't bother here. Now, this has got the same problem. It begins uh, as a blank and slowly comes in to show the shot. And at that point, I want to chop the front off again so that it's there from the start. So I've selected that particular video, hit split, and now I can I can delete that little bit of a section. I'll save that um, as a project, call it uh, video editing. Video my edit, that's for short, that'll do. Um, the next thing I want to put down is the distance shot of me. So I'll drop that onto the next video line. Every time I add a video, it puts in an extra space underneath it for me to add further videos if I if I want to. The next thing I want to do is to bring down the soundtrack and I'll bring that and put it onto the music line right at the bottom. Okay, now these three tracks have all got their own soundtrack and I don't want to use those, I only want to have my soundtrack of the MP3. So I'm going to remove these soundtracks by clicking on each one <coughs> and selecting Unlink Video and Audio. Click away from that and then click back on it and press Delete to remove the audio line which has been separated. Do the same for this one and do the same for the one of me. Okay, now one of the problems with uh, PowerDirector is it doesn't appear to give you a, a facility whereby you can determine when the particular start time of a video occurs. Um, so what I do is I have a spare image which is only used just as a, for padding temporarily. So I'm going to drop this image right at the start of the video on top of that and insert it so it pushes my sound my track back. And I'm going to make that change the duration of that to 30 seconds so it gives me some time to play with. Now on the next line down I'm going to put another one of those and I'm going to use this particular one for regulating the audio. I'm going to go to the audio track and I'm going to link it up with the end of that 30 seconds and then I'm going to disable it or lock it so that I can't move that about. Now the idea here is to try and get these two synchronized so what I'm going to do is to play it 
and see when the plucking of the string on the video actually lines up with the sound um, and that's what I need to do now this has got a quite a long intro so I'm going to start fairly well in, well in and see how it goes so watch the video and listen to the sound Now, I think that was about six seconds <coughs> before the, um, the sound that we heard and the actual plucking of the string occurred. So I'm going to reduce the length of this uh, JPEG by about six seconds and see if that gets any closer. Once again, I'll go to where I think this, this thing starts and listen again. Okay, <clears throat> now to me that was possibly half a second after the music so I'm going to reduce this by another half a second and um, these seconds are divided into 25th so if I make it 23 and 12 25th that's near enough half and let's try it once more Okay, that requires some very minor op alterations to that to, to get it into sync. You get the idea, and I'll put you on pause while I actually make those changes. Right, I've now synchronised those two. So if I just give you an example, put it in the middle of the video. And that's pretty good. Okay, next thing I'll show you <coughs> is um, how to change this to sh um, change my video to be able to see the other two behind it. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on it and I'm going to click fix and enhance and this is just to brighten up the overall uh, video. I'm going to click video enhancement which is a general key and instantly you can see that how much brighter that's become. That's probably good enough for this example. I could other, obviously use other features within here. Now I'll change the chroma key, <coughs> go into modify, apply a chroma key and click the little colour uh, dropper and I can now select the colour that I want to become transparent. Um, you can play with this, sometimes it's a darker um, selection makes the best choice, sometimes it's a lighter. I'll go for something in the middle for this video for argument's sake, that's pretty good. I'll now increase the tolerance slightly and you can see if I drop the tolerance right off you can see virtually everything and as I move it forward it gets to a point where it doesn't make any further changes. There I'll stop. Now I'll change the hue and that I can put considerably further up. Need to be careful that you don't get little bits of uh, guitar disappear if you go too high. I will now save that <coughs> and now if I play from the point I was at you'll be able to see the sky and the video sitting behind me. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do exactly the same thing with my close-up shot so I'll do that while um, it's paused and you'll, it only uses the existing techniques I've shown you so it'll be there when they come back. Right, I've now pulled down the close-up shot and I've enhanced it and I've modified it so that it, it with the uh, chroma key so we can see behind it and actually see the other shot, you just see the bit of the guitar sitting behind me there. Um, <coughs> and uh, it's all been synchronized. 
So what I need to do now is to unlock the soundtrack and click on the very start of it which brings the cursor up to the start of where it was synchronized with these two videos. So I'm going to click on the distance shot and split it and then I'll click on the close-up shot and split it and now I can remove these four snippets of video just by selecting each one and pushing the delete key and I can move my soundtrack back to the beginning and if I now select somewhere in the middle of the tune they should be in sync that looks fine what I want to do now is to make it look as if I have two cameras so I'm going to temporarily disable the close-up shot and I'm going to some distance in run through the, the playing and stop it at a suitable natural break point there then I'm going to split the video at that point and I'm going to split the close-up at that point and I'm going to enable the close-up and disable the distance shot let's play it again I will now stop it again, which is a suitable point, um, split it once more, and split the other shot. Okay, now what I can do is if I enable both of those videos, but take out the bits that I don't need. So if I select that bit, I don't want that to be showing at all, so I can right click it and say remove and leave a gap. I don't want that bit of the distance shot so I can select that and remove and leave a gap and I don't want this piece I'm going to remove and leave a gap so now being as they're both active I can go back to this sort of point and you'll see the close-up shot come into play as long as make sure I'm on movie here not the clip which I am You can see I've now switched to the close-up. After that phrase, I'll switch back. There we go. Okay, the very last thing I need to do is to square everything up. If I bring uh, an image down and line it up with the end of the video, the end of the, sorry, soundtrack, and then what I can do the cursor will be at a position where I want to split all these other videos away and I can delete all those bits so now the entire video I can lose that because I don't need it anymore I can also remove empty tracks by right clicking remove empty tracks there we go, I now have my completed video. All I do, need to do is to add titles uh, and to produce it. Um, just a quick tip on production. Um, I tend to um, use the WMV format. Uh, this I find is complained about the least um, by uh, YouTube and I select it as a 1920 by 1080 video format. Okay, well I hope that's been helpful and uh, good luck with your editing. Bye for now.